Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Now, the Aprilia Touareg 660. Today we're continuing the video series that I'm making with this bike that I have purchased for long-term review. Now, if you're watching, if this is the first video that's coming up in your feed, I might suggest you go back and watch the series in order if you really wanna know everything about this bike, but you can watch them in any order you want, that's fine. I don't really care. And and all the videos are linked below uh, in the video description in case you want to watch those other videos. They're also in a playlist. So uh, a lot of you have been waiting for this exact video with this bike. So what we're going to do today is we're going to thoroughly test the bike in off-road real world conditions. So I'm out here in the mountains of Southern California in the San Jacinto Mountains uh, and we are going to test the bike in really uh, in big dips and whoops to test the suspension. We're going to take it on some high speed dirt, high speed dirt roads. Sorry. We're going to take it in and some deep sand areas and show you how it is in the sand. We're gonna ride through rocks. Uh, we're gonna do, and, and through all of that, I'm also gonna show you how the traction control and electronic riding aids uh, work with the off-road settings on the bike. And we'll talk about generally how this bike performs off-road. And we'll talk about a little bit about comparisons to some of the other bikes that I've tested. So uh, why don't we just uh, get on a trail and get riding? All right, let me give you a little walk around of the bike and show you the way it's set up. So I have got the Motaz Rals rear tire and the Dual Venture front tire. The factory tires, the Pirelli Scorpion STRs, are really not good enough for me and the way I like to ride off-road, although they're a great road tire. I've got the Moscow Moto Reckless 40, which fit amazing on this bike. No racks, nothing whatsoever, just completely stock back here, except the heat shield. Black Dog Cycle Works foot pegs. I've got the stock skid plate, which... I've already broken, we'll cover that in other videos. Uh, besides that, the bike's mostly stock. I do have flex bars, bark buster hand guards to protect from crashes, a Pueish wind deflector, which you see in all my videos, linked below as well, and that helps keep the wind quiet, uh, which helps me for filming and also makes it more comfortable. I've also got the Moscow Moto Gnome tank bag, which uh, works, just fits, happens to fit perfectly on this motorcycle and keeps the, the bag up here on this top part of the tank. It's actually the air box up here, if you're wondering. And then I've got a Garmin Zumo X, T, which we're not going to need because I think I know where I'm going on this ride. So let's put on our gloves here. I'm using the Climb GTX gloves today and I'm using wearing my new uh, Carlsbad suit. The Badlands suit was just too bulky and heavy for me so decided to go back to the Carlsbad and I'm just a huge fan of this color scheme. They call it, what do they call it? Um, petrol with strike orange. I really love the color of this, this riding suit. Looks great. So, uh, for riding the bike off-road, there's a few things you need to know. Uh, the riding modes, which you can change on the fly, are right here with this button. I've talked about that in the other video. So, I have off-road mode set up um, with rear ABS disabled, the front ABS is left on, and then when you select the traction control on the dashboard, you can then scroll through uh, four different levels or turn it off using the cruise control button. So the cruise control button also controls this. Very, very handy. I really, really appreciate that. So uh, we are going to go ahead, well, we'll leave it in one for now uh, and show you how that is. And then we'll, when we get in the sand and stuff, we're going to turn that completely off. Um, so let's go. So this trail is a good test. Uh, it's got rocks, it's got a lot of big dips in it, which we use to test the suspension. It's really rutted out, so it's really kind of rough. And uh, it's really a great suspension test. I take all the adventure bike tests, I take them up here. Uh, camera issues. This bike is so fast that it uh, tends to wreak havoc with my camera, so. This is a good time to talk about the suspension on the bike and it's hard to tell from the video but I'm riding this bike pretty aggressively through this terrain and the suspension performs a superb job of 
keeping the bike in control it gives a plush ride big drop there it gives a plush ride but it's also very supportive when you hit when you hit bigger things now i'm standing up because i'm riding aggressively if i sit down the bike's a lot harder to control sitting down So the theme, I think the theme throughout this whole video today is going to be uh, that this bike performs, does a superb job of off-road handling. The chassis and suspension and the riding position, the ergonomics, everything works together with the electronics as well uh, to provide a controlled, fun, enjoyable, and, and really uh, amazing off-road riding experience. Like I talked about the suspension, uh, you can hit stuff really hard, really fast, and it, I've, it's very hard to get this bike to bottom out. And for reference, I'm 200 pounds or 90 kilograms, so I'm not the lightest guy in the world. But also, over these smaller rocks and you know smaller bumps, the suspension is plush and soft. It doesn't beat you up. It's very good uh, for riding all day in off-road conditions, which I have done already on this bike. So you can see I've got the rear ABS turned off. What I'm going to do, and the cool thing with the electronics, since we're talking about that, is I can now turn the traction control off on the fly. I held down the cruise control button on the minus, and now it says ATC off. So now I have full throttle control without any traction control intervention. Now let's kind of pull into this little pull out or this tight area, talk a little bit about the slow speed control, the clutch, and how the engine behaves at low RPMs. So one thing you'll notice about this bike, so here's first gear, let the clutch out. The bike doesn't chug or stall or want to die or do anything weird like that. Now this is a test of my balance for sure. But what I really appreciate about this engine it's just how smooth it runs uh, close to idle and it's very difficult to you know to stall this bike the clutch control is very good um, for a cable clutch it has very good feel and so i found this bike very easy to modulate at low speeds like this I'm trying to practice my sort of balance here so here i am i'm not touching the ground i've got standing up and I can move along at zero miles per hour. So <laughs> under one mile per hour, I can maintain good control of this bike. It's very well balanced and it's just very well suited for slow speed control, which is really kind of a nice improvement from the KTM 890 that I just came off of riding. So feeding the clutch out real slow, five miles an hour. If I dump the clutch out completely, the bike doesn't stall and it'll put along about six, seven miles an hour in first gear. The engine runs very smooth. Now, second gear. So if I go into second gear, there's about 12 miles an hour, hand off the throttle, right? And, you know, the engine runs very smooth. Now, if I wanna pull away, let me be really bad and put the bike in third gear, get it super low, 1500 RPM. That's acceleration from 1500 RPM in third gear. The engine is super, super smooth. <laughs> this bike is so well balanced, so easy to ride for an adventure bike. So uh, with that kind of out of the way, why don't we go find some sand? All right, sand, everyone's favorite on a big adventure bike. So riding in sand is really mostly about your technique and your confidence and also having good knobby tires. So riding in sand, you know, standing up, having your weight back a little bit, being very aggressive with the throttle and the brake and not using the handlebars to steer, but instead wading through your feet, through the pegs uh, to steer the bike. So um, 
In sand, I find that turning traction control off is the best way on the Touareg. Uh, on some bikes, I can get away with running it in like number one, on two on the KTMs. On this bike, it's better to have off so you have maximum power. This is very deep, very, very deep sand here. Um, there's a tiny bit of moisture down if you dig deep enough, but it's the kind of sand where I have to be careful where I stop because I will get stuck, even with knobby tires. So. Uh, let's get to riding and see how this bike is. Uh, in terms of an adventure bike that you'd take in the sand, this is definitely one of the better ones because it's not too big or heavy, but it's still a lot of work and uh, demands a great deal of practice and sort of technique uh, to get this right. So I'll try not to embarrass myself here in the video. So what I'm going to do in the sand is, especially because it's so deep, I'm going to start out in second gear. It's just what I prefer to do. And I'm going to really dump the, dump the clutch, get aggressive on the throttle, and take off and start standing up right away. If you try to kind of go slow, if you try to kind of do this kind of thing, you're going to dig in, but also you're not going to have any control. The bike's going to snake around. Second gear. So, for an adventure bike, this thing does very well out here in this deep sand. It's still very much a challenge to ride in this, but I'm really trying to stay loose on the bars. Let's try to swing around this wash, come around this other side here. See, it's fun once you get your speed up and you get the bike planing up on top of the sand. The bike has plenty of power for this. First and second gear, second gear mostly. You see, when you slow down, you start to dig in, right? Ooh, like that. So again, what we want to do, second gear, aggressive. here on this bank. Whoa! Think we're back to where I started. <laughs> That's a good workout, great practice. I'd love to come back and do more of that when I'm not uh, trying to watch all my cameras here. <laughs> so, the Touareg 660, for an adventure bike in deep sand, it's about as good as you're gonna get. It's, you know, the lightest of the multi-cylinder adventure bikes, have good knobby tires, but sand is mostly about your riding technique and ability, confidence, practice, take classes. Deep sand like that's one of the most challenging things, but be aggressive, don't go slow. Take your weight off the handlebars. Don't steer through the handlebars. Steer through your pegs and your feet. And uh, yeah, and then you'll start to have fun instead of struggling. So that was fun, but uh, let's get on to our next segment. All right, pavement ends. Let's get this bike on some gravel roads and see how she does. This is obviously the easiest part of the test for me and for the bike. It's really not too much special required to go on roads like this, but we'll go ahead and do this anyway, have a little bit of fun. And this GoPro is frozen up because that's what they do. Well, you know what? We're just going to do away with that camera. Oh, I don't know, maybe it's back now. I don't know. These things are so stupid. Anyway, we still got two cameras. That'll be enough. So, uh, make sure this one's recording. Uh, Off-road mode. 
off-road mode there we go I didn't talk much about the traction control before so let's go ahead and do that so go back here turn the traction control back on to number well, we'll start in number four. I'll show you how this works. So we'll start with track control, then we'll get some high speeds, and then we'll go do some technical off-roading. How does that sound? So traction control number four is most intrusive. So when I whack, that's full throttle, and it's very intrusive, right? Okay, number three. Well, that's very weird. It feels the same as four to me. Let's go down to number two. A little bit less intrusive that time. Let's go down to number one. <laughs> yeah! Hit it! <laughs> I love this bike. Um, yeah, so track control number one is actually pretty good in a dirt. It lets you have quite a bit of slide. Uh, but not not so much slide that you go too crazy, but it's pretty useful and unless I'm in deep sand Or I really want to do a lot of steering with the throttle the number one's pretty nice. I like it Now I've got rear ABS off, but the front is on so I can grab a whole load of front brake and You see the hazard flashing it does that when I brake hard. That's a feature of this bike. I really like Nice thing about having front ABS on is I can just grab a ton of front brake and it's not going to uh, tuck the front in too bad Let's go up this way. So I'm still in traction control number one. You can see that it still lets me get the bike pretty sideways. <laughs> the chassis on this thing is so good. <laughs> it loves to drift. Man, this bike is so legit <laughs> it's so much fun to ride so on the gravel roads on the dirt roads i mean it's fast it's stable the suspension is smooth the brakes work great the electronics work great um it's comfortable there's just no complaints right and the great thing of course if i i can change the electronics as i ride so turn traction control off i can do it as i'm riding I don't have to stop. So the sound that you hear when I accelerate, that's not the exhaust, that's the air intake, that's the induction noise. And it is absolutely glorious on this bike and it's one of the absolute best things about riding this bike is the noise. It's just this deep, wonderful sound. It's, it's just intoxicating. I absolutely love that. Okay, well, let's get this bike on it's a little bit more difficult trails. All right, so to finish off this sort of off-road review, I've come up higher in the mountains to a little bit more of a difficult trail. It's not crazy difficult, but it's a lot slower and twistier, and there's ruts and rocks and roots, and there could be some snow and ice on the trail or mud, so we'll see what we get. But just wanted to show a little bit more of the slow speed control on a little bit more technical trail. Um, now, I'm not going on single track or anything crazy because not that I can't do that, but really that's not what this bike is for, and that's not what most of the uh, people who buy this bike are going to do. They're going to do stuff like this, mostly. So, let's get going. So I'm going to try to be a good boy and stand up for most of this. This is like a kind of a big washout here. Ah. So I've kind of mentioned this already, uh, but one thing I truly appreciate about the Touareg is the tractability of the engine in second gear on the trail. So I'm in second gear and I can just putter along, idle along, and I can pull away smoothly. 
I just can't tell you how much of a difference that makes compared to some other bikes. It's just very, very easy to ride because of that. And then in terms of, you know, the top heaviness or the balance and the handling and all that, it's really close to the benchmark bike, which in my opinion is the KTM 890 and 790. I don't know if the center of gravity is quite as low as those bikes, but it's close. On paper, this bike's actually a little bit lighter, but it changes direction like this super fast. So the handling, the overall handling and composure is extremely close to the top of the class. I would almost tie it for first place with something like an 890R. I mean, if you, if you need to go slow and sort of pick your way through something, this bike is just very, very easy to do that with. Now this trail is actually a lot tamer than I, than I thought, but it's all right. Still, still makes for some good riding. So because this bike has 240 millimeters of suspension travel or about nine and a half inches, that's a really good thing because it has plenty of travel to deal with large obstacles in the trail. Um, when you ride an adventure bike with like seven or eight inches of suspension travel, there's a dramatic difference between something like that and something like this bike. This is a tricky rut here, so I'm gonna go over here. Try to stay out of the deep ruts when you can, and if you have to cross, try to cross perpendicular to stuff like that. Another little rocky area, just take your time. Hmm, let's go ride up here a little bit. So, <laughs> I kind of did this on purpose. Um, we can see if we can get the bike over this log, but the, oh, the stock skid plate is really poor and uh, very weak, so I don't feel very good about doing this, but we'll try it anyway. Now, the correct technique to cross over a log like this, really, would be to stay there, bike, stay there, would be to sort of, you know, uh, um, there we go. Maybe that's a good thumbnail for the video. <laughs> the correct technique would be just to get in front of it and then pop the clutch and kind of, you know, hop up a little bit over it. But, you know, I'm not, wasn't really ready for that. So I think I'm gonna grab a picture here. Just go around the log, Ian, just go around. That's kind of icy right there. Let's go. Now that I'm out of breath, let's go explore up here. Ooh, that looks slippery, huh? So for that, I think I need to go through these rocks. So I plowed through the rocks like that because they have better traction and trying to ride on that ice. This is a fun little trail, but this is really good to demonstrate, you know, if you get into some of the slower technical riding, how does this bike do? And really, for an adventure bike, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, a good time was had by all. I'm pooped. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed going on this uh, ride with me through all this different kind of terrain. I know I sure enjoyed, I sure enjoyed filming this. This bike is a genuine pleasure to ride in any off-road condition. It truly, truly is. On a lot of adventure bikes, especially the larger, heavier ones, and I happen to own a 1250 GS, the off-road portions, they can be fun, but sometimes when the going gets more difficult, the bike can become a bit, a bit of a chore, too heavy, too bulky, 
doesn't respond well to your inputs. This bike right here, it's so legit. It's so capable, so much fun to ride. Aprilia did an incredible job and I'm really struggling. I, I honestly can't think of any real downsides or any notable complaints that I have in terms of riding off-road on this bike. I mean, other of course, other than, of course, the flimsy skid plate and hand guards and stuff like that, which you just remedy right away. And I probably need to put crash bars on this bike too. Actually, I am putting crash bars on it. SW Motec is sending me some crash bars. So um, if you have questions about this, comments, stuff I missed, any input that you have, please put that down below. Uh, please stay tuned as I keep releasing more videos in this series. Thank you for going along on this journey with me with the Tuareg on this long-term test bike. I've really, really enjoyed making this series. So thank you for coming along for this ride. Uh, again, uh, please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.